Hey there. Today we're going to be talking about a winch switch. Um, I've had a couple people ask me to do one on these. They can be kind of confusing, but they're actually very simple. It is a seven pole switch. So you have your ground, you have your power in, and you have four outs. So that makes it a double pull, double throw. Um, this one here is a 12 volt switch, 20 amp. It also can do 24 volt at 10 amp, both direct current. Um, it gives you a lot of options. This one, like I said on the front, it's laser etched to be a winch switch, but that doesn't mean that's what you have to use it for. It can be used for lights or other things as well. It could actually be used for lights and something else or two light sets of lights, whatever. Uh, when you put the switch all the way to the bottom position, one set of poles comes on. When you switch the switch to the, all the way to the top position, another set comes on. And when it's in the middle, it is off. So it is fairly versatile and um, most people do use them for winches, but you can use them for lights and stuff as well. It doesn't have to be just for a winch. So we're going to do a quick wire up job on this one to just kind of show you a little of uh, how this is done. So basically you're going to start with a couple of sections of small wire and you connect them together. So you'll have a larger version, a larger wire, and then a short wire attached to that. And I've just screwed them together um, so you can see they're just basically attached like that. Now, let's get this on there, that's one. Just gonna do all the soldering at one time so it's out of the way. Now, these switches, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Um, Amazon sells them, eBay sells them, uh, Lord Co. Napa, those kind of places. Pretty much anywhere you get your electronic components, you can buy one of these or several of these, different types usually. Actually one that works just first. So you're gonna need your basic red wire, your power to the battery or to your ACC, however you were deciding to power this switch. Then you will need a ground wire, your black wire obviously. And on top of that, you need a couple of outs so to go to the load, whatever you're planning on uh, powering with this switch, basically. So I'm just using the standard spade connectors you use for just about everything else that you wire with these switches and stuff up with. Nothing fancy about them at all. These are the bulk versions that I just picked up off the internet or the local shop. And as always, I'm going to be using my tea drink. Pretty much since I discovered heat drink, I have had no use at all for electrical tape for most things, which if you like me, probably detest the stuff when it comes to wiring in your car. You never ever had to take that stuff off, it's just a sticky mess and it doesn't always stay in place. Time wears it out and whatnot. You also end up with it fraying off or getting rigid hard when it's been in place for a long time. So I am a big, big, big fan of heat trick. doing this as quick as possible because it's pretty much standard fare. It's nothing special I'm doing with this, so I'm going to leave that one off for right now. Okay, now the other section of this, we will just tin the ends of these smaller sections of wire. If you're working with small wires and stuff like that, and worried about melting different sections or working on circuit boards or components like the switches 
where they're set into plastic and you don't want to run the risk of melting those. I recommend one of these little guys. Some people call them spare hands. They have all sorts of different names. Um, basically just alligator clips and a magnifying glass. And they're very handy for sinking the heat out of your wires and whatnot so you don't end up melting everything if you have to have the heat on it for a little while so it's not cooperating or whatnot. Very handy if you're using the with the switches and stuff because like I said they are set in plastic and because they're set in plastic if you are not quick enough or if you're not really adept maybe using the wrong type solder and a number of things you could end up with um, meltage of the component you don't want to melt so these come in really handy for that. Now, I usually like to, like I said, put heat shrink on everything. I am skipping that step at the moment, but I will get back to it before I actually install this into anything. So we've got three of those made already, or two of them, sorry. Here's a need one. You can get your uh, spade connectors and whatnot locally, or you can buy them on eBay, uh, which is a fairly decent place to get that kind of stuff, actually. Amazon as well uh, it has them. You can get some pretty good deals on them from Amazon, uh, as well as eBay. The ones on eBay usually come from China. They're as good quality, most of it. It just takes a lot longer to get them to you. So if you're in a rush or shipping time is a problem for you, then you'll definitely want to get them close. And do some price checking because some places are better prices than others, obviously. Some places you can get thousands of them for one the same price you can buy a hundred. So if you do a lot of this kind of stuff, or plan to do a lot of this kind of stuff, then it behooves you to do some price fake shopping and look around a bit. Alright, so we're almost done this section. We're done with that for the time being. Alright, so what you end up with is something that looks like this. And we have three of them. And now we'll go back to the switch. So your switch you obviously you have your ground and your main power in the center one is from it's the center pins so your that goes to your battery your 12 volt source how whatever you're powering this with and then the ones that come out of the switch are these ones on the end How you hook this up basically is not that big of a deal. I mean, you don't have to have the short one all on one side and the long one on the other side. Uh, as long as the colors that you have, the outs and the ins, are in the right locations, that's all that really matters because they are connected, right? So, do a, a better job. If myself, if I was wiring this into a permanent position, I would. Like I've said before, I would solder right into the pins themselves and then heat shrink over top of them. I like that form of installation over the spade connectors usually, but if you're worried or have to take it out or not sure if the switch is going to last or whatever, then this is a good way to do it. And that way, if you have do have to change it out, it's very easy to do. So that is just about that. now. Again, your black wire, of course, is your ground if you've wired this properly. If you haven't, you'll know pretty quick. <laughs> you'll smell something burning or get some sparks. So, and your power wire is there. Now, so your switch comes on and then in both positions. So you can see it's on on the top one, on on the bottom one, off in the center. Now, We're going to do this. I'm just going to kind of connect these up here. 
going to really worry about wiring them into a hard position as long as they do not touch. No, you're not supposed to do this kind of stuff, but I don't know about you, but I end up doing it all the time. Of course, I'm a lot more careful than I was when I was younger. <laughs> Naive, not uh, young, dumb and full of whatever that last word is. All right, so uh, we've almost got this in position. Get these three connected. So I've connected one light to one pole, one side leg, if you want to call it that, and I've connected the other one to the other side of the pole. I've connected the grounds all together, and it's powered by just a regular 12 volt bench light. So. In theory, if I click this switch, we should get light. That's one side, and there's your other side. So technically you don't have to have them split. You could have up to 40 amps on this one switch without the use of a contactor or relay, uh, whatever you want to call it. So you could have one bank of lights on one, so you had your super high beam uh, off-road lights on one and some fog lights on the other, and you only had room for one switch. You could do that with this so the down one would be your fog lights and the up one would be your high powered off-road lights uh, depending on your location uh, my area in canada here we have to have our off-road lights covered at all times when they're not uh, when we're on highways or public roads and if you don't it's big fine so there you go that is pretty much it that is your standard seven pin double throw double pole 12 volt winch switch now, I've used it for lights in this situation, but if you were wiring it in as a winch switch, you would follow the directions from the manufacturer after this point. This is just a tutorial for the switch wiring itself. So one side and the other side and your black and your red go to your power sources. So right to the battery um, or in the cab if you want it on only when it's on when the truck or car or vehicle is on, then you have it on the ACC wire, power source with key actuated, and if not, then you would run it right into a 12 volt, 24 hour source, and then you would have access to the lights even when the key is off. That can be problematic, as you know, with battery drainage and that. Even with these little LED lights, I have noticed that if they're left too long, they can drain your battery um, or the power going through just residual seems to do that so keep that in mind when you're wiring it up i hope that helped you out if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the description section below like share definitely share if it helped you out and hit that subscribe button for me i'd really appreciate it thanks again have a great day